morning. Welcome to Bethany Lutheran in Warren, Oregon. Today I'm preaching on the book of Mark, chapter 4, verses 26 through 34. Jesus also said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow, but he does not know how. The earth produces of itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can nest in its shade. With so many parables, he taught the word to them as they were able to hear it. But he did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The kingdom of God is like a Google ad. It comes into your life at unexpected moments and without warning. It introduces you to what you did not know you needed. Sometimes it shows you what you did not know even existed. Once you call upon this living ad, it will burst forth with volumes of information to educate you on your needs for its substance. Once you delve into it, you will be amazed at how it multiplies while you slumber. More and more ads will shower upon you from the greatest heights and the outer limits of the knowledge realm. You will become friends with people of all types and orientations across the world. People you never expected to number amongst your friends. People you would never invite into your home. Yet through the Google app, you will grow to trust these new friends. Trusting enough to share the most intimate information of your life and your bank accounts. Ah, the kingdom of heaven is wondrous indeed. Amen and amen. A parable is intended to be disruptive, to interrupt what you thought you knew, and not just teach you something, but to actually confront you with a surprising and often unwanted truth. Jesus describes the coming kingdom of God in parables because he knows the reality it introduces is unexpected and his hearers may not take it all in at once. Like a Google ad, the kingdom of God comes through no effort on our part and it cannot be controlled. Okay, that was my take on a modern day parable. Now let's look at a couple of parables, Jesus style. The first parable says that the kingdom of God is like seeds scattered on the ground. The planter did nothing else to the seed. And a few days later, later surprise, a little seedling pops its head out of the ground. And all by itself, it continues to grow until it becomes a stalk of grain with a full head ready for harvest. Now, if you work the land or just plant a flower seed once in a while, you see the same. As long as that seed has some soil, some sunlight, and some moisture, it does what it was designed to do, to germinate, grow, and flourish. But we no longer believe that nature's way is good enough. It's not enough to scatter the seed. Oh no, we need to genetically alter the seed so it grows more easily in any kind of soil, so it produces more, so it's hardier, healthier, and resilient. We need a gospel that will grow in today's world, so let's create a hybrid. You know, we need a bit more prosperity to go with the gospel for the poor. We need a bit more glitz and glam 
to this humble gospel. Changing the seed is not enough, though. We need to change the soil that the seed grows in. Let's change the worship. We need more lights, more entertainment, a fog machine. The gospel can't grow in thousand-year-old liturgies. We need to till up the worship, break up the unplowed ground in these dusty old sanctuaries. We're afraid that we're not doing enough or that we're not doing it well enough. Well, I suggest that doing more is often a side, sign that we do not trust what we are doing. We do not trust the power of the gospel to grow on its own. The reactionary response is to throw up our hands and say, okay, God, if you want this kingdom of yours to grow, you'd better get to it. Exactly. Now you get it. We are kingdom workers, not kingdom savers. Paul has the right idea in 1 Corinthians 3, verses 6 and 7. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. We plant the seeds and we prepare for the harvest whenever it suddenly burst through from the earth. So why does the harvest seem to get smaller every year? Fewer baptism, fewer members, fewer pledges. Will it be enough? Lord, you tell us that a mustard seed is enough, but it's such a tiny seed. Surely it will not be big enough to fill our sanctuary or big enough to meet our budget or big enough to put a dent in our community's poverty or big enough to heal the moral virus throughout our land. Lord, what we need is a mighty tree. We need a giant redwood, a sequoia, or one of those fabled cedars of Lebanon. Yes, a big, strong tree like the cedar from our Ezekiel text today. What we need to remember, though, is that Ezekiel's cedar symbolized God's restoration of the kingdom of David, an earthly kingdom mighty and proud. But earthly kingdoms rise and fall, as did David's, and the bigger they are, the weaker they get. Every empire that grows, believing it can become big enough for the whole world, eventually topples like a felled tree. The point of this first parable is for us to plant seeds of good news and then trust God. Trust what God does when we are not looking that the Spirit of God will germinate those seeds and nurture them into growth. Nonetheless, someone must plant those seeds, and God has assigned that tax task to us as believers. In our second parable, Jesus equates the kingdom of God to a single tiny mustard seed. A seed that does not grow into something dramatic like a towering tree, but rather a large bush, a common, ordinary bush. It remains lowly, like a king who arrives on a common, ordinary donkey, a king who comes not to be served, but to serve. A king who offers a kingdom that finds its greatness in being humble. A kingdom that kneels to wash feet and bind up the wounds of strangers on the side of the road. A kingdom that is not lifted up on the shoulders of servants, but on a cross. Mustard plants are less a decorative shrub that we plant along as an accent on the side of our yard and more an invasive seed. It's a weed, one that can easily get out of hand and take over whatever ground it infests. 
this common lowly shrub is big enough to offer a home to all kinds of birds, Jew and Gentile, male and female, black and white, gay and straight, rich and poor, introvert and extrovert. This kingdom of God is big enough for all to find a home. There are over 2.6 billion Christians on earth, by far the largest group of any religion or faith group. This kingdom is dangerous. It is out of control. There is no limit to its effect on its people. It can cause people to change their jobs and change their ways of life. There's no telling where it might lead once it gets its grip on your soil. And there's no telling what kind of bird you may find in your mustard shrub. These birds may be the undesirables, you know, the kind that decent folk avoid, the ones we prefer to keep on the other side of the street. Read more of Mark's gospel and you will see that it is these people that flock to the kingdom that Jesus proclaims. The original followers of Jesus are often society's losers. Lowly, smelly fishermen, despised tax collectors, prostitutes and criminals, the lowlifes scorned by society. To the outside world and to the religious establishment, the followers of Jesus have always been those people desperate enough, lowly enough to find hope in Jesus' message that his kingdom offers refuge, hope, acceptance, and comfort. Yes, the kingdom of God has room and hope for all even for the likes of us. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God of mercy and grace, we thank you that you are a God who is big enough to take in our work and use it, big enough to work while we sleep, big enough for all people to be welcoming your kingdom, big enough to overcome our sin, big enough to use our love. Lord, we thank you. And we look forward to the day when the harvest comes in. Amen.